Okay, YouTube. Here's a weird little thing for you. This is a aircraft radio set, a Trig TY something or other. It's the little round unit. For some reason, these got installed in some of our Robins when they wanted a cheap way to get to 833 kilohertz. Um, now this one and one of our others became sort of unusable with interference, engine related interference. And this is a strange thing, both of them after having new engines installed. It was a few hours afterwards, but gradually they've become unusable. This one was particularly bad. Um, when I took it out this morning for a little air test, the, the, as soon as you got any significant power on and got moving, the squelch would open and it was crackling and hissing so badly you couldn't hear and you couldn't receive any transmissions. Uh, broadcasting out was readability five. So very strange. Spoke to our avionics engineer, Jim Sharman. He said, well, yeah, something on the airplane is interfering with it. And these sets are very sensitive. <clears throat> um, so I switched on and off a few things. I switched the alternator off. It made no difference. Switched the transponder off. Some of the clicks stopped, but it was still crackling and hissing. Um, so we decided that initially to, to do the basics and um, clean up the aerial ground plane and make sure that the, the um, unit that drives the set which is under that panel there which is not a great place to install it was correctly grounded and that this panel is bonded and that um, the P leads and bits are in reason shielding is in reasonable condition so we went through that right I have one of these command antennas which I'm told again by our, our knowledgeable avionics guy these rely on the countersunk screws into the metal base here the ground actually has to come from the countersink through the screw back to the skin the other side from the nut which is i suppose one way of doing it but you do need to make sure that was clean and it had started to fester a bit on the inside there's actually a gasket against the fuselage skin and we put a bead of sealant around that afterwards. So we put new screws, we cleaned out the counter sinks, we cleaned up the metal on the other side and the doubler, put it all back together with a smear of ACF 50 and just uh, cleaned and chromated the top there because it had started to corrode a bit underneath. Cleaned up the coaxes. I took the top panel off the front. I took the... Um, I took the set out which is riveted to the other side of this panel which is really not a great idea whoever installed these was was lazy in my opinion but this panel is now sealed and bonded it's got a good ground there i went out and ran it again and there was a significant improvement in the in the worst worst of the noise um it was better, you had to manually open the squelch, but as soon as you did, or as soon as it cut to receive, um, there was crackling and engine related noise. So I turned off the alternator, didn't make any difference. Turned off the transponder, some of the clicking stopped. Fuel pump causes a very slight interference on it, but not, not bad. Um, it seemed like it might be magneto or HT harness related. It was more of a crackle and slightly related to RPM. So that's where, you know, I remember we had this weird issue before with a, a new mag on a new engine. And I'll just show you what we've been finding. All right, this is a bit of a strange one, but inside some of these new mags recently, we've been finding that they're sort of oily and shiny and have a film i don't know whether it's intended to be oops, some kind of inhibiting oil but decoated with something slightly wet looking you can see it's sort of crept into the corners there 
and it seems like it causes this white yeah, will you focus these white tracks up the HT towers it doesn't cause a mag drop but I'm just beginning to wonder what's going on there you can also see it on the ends of the harness that that go into these sort of white smoke and the other thing is I question the age of some of the parts that are fitted to these apparently brand new magnetos they're not a cheap Kelly overhaul they were sold to us as new slick by champion new new outright no exchange no overhaul um, but these have been punched down all right you do have to hit them with a punch to put them in but somebody's gone off the edges of both of these um, the color of this gear compared to this one they discolor like this with age all right so that is either not new or it's either been in service or in stores for a very long time if you look at the the other mag the gear color is somewhat different and i've noticed that a couple of times lately likewise the capacitor i don't know if it's possible to identify these by a date code but this one I don't know, the threads look a bit dirty. It had a one or two apprentice marks on it, although it has been installed obviously in the mag. But it doesn't look as new and shiny as this one. It just doesn't. It's tarnished, it's got scratches on it. The wire is a darker yellow. So I am just a tiny bit suspicious as to the newness of this magneto. And what's made me suspicious is that this is the second time that we've had radio interference. We've found this issue with a mag. We've changed the capacitor, cleaned out all the HT side of it and put it back together. And the problem has gone away. So I'm curious to see if the problem goes away with this one or if anyone out there has had this problem with little trig radios. You might drive yourself nuts over it and it's something in a magneto. Okay, or P-lead shielding or something like that. They seem to be very, very sensitive to radiated frequencies from anything with a high tension spark in them. Which is not unusual, but they're more sensitive than some other sets, I think. Anyway, we should get the new capacitor on Thursday and I shall reassemble this mag. I shall run the engine and if the problem is gone, I shall report back to you because someone else is going to have this problem somewhere. If we've had it twice on a fleet of five robins, someone else is going to be tearing their hair out over it. All right, we'll report back Thursday. All right, I just noticed another little thing on closer inspection. Again, this mag hasn't done really any any work. There's a bit more soot and gunge on there than I would expect. And this stuff here, I think it is as a result of an oil, a film of oil inside the mag and oil oily films on stuff which is exposed to high voltages is a bad idea eventually you'll get burning soot and carbon tracking and i'm beginning to wonder if we're not seeing just the very start of that um, because of something that's being applied inside some of these mags or got onto them or contaminated them or they've used too much of the oil that goes onto the little bronze bushes that these bits pivot on. I mean, that's, I don't know what it is, but we found it twice now 
and cleaning it all out and changing the capacitor has stopped radio interference and I seriously hope it does in this case too because this is beginning to drive us a little bit nuts now you can actually see where these parts have sat on the rag they have left behind them oily marks which I've only just noticed so there is something on the surfaces of these that creeps creeps around and you know if it leaves a translucent mark on a on a cloth then it's oily usually or fatty and it shouldn't be really around areas where you've got high tension so that's just my opinion again I'm always interested to learn every day is a school day but I'm going to clean it with some panel wipe I'm going to clean it and dab it off of all these parts reassemble the mag and see if it works all right I'm also carefully going to clean the uh the ends of the HT leads, the insulators on them when I go into the mag and yeah, make sure you actually get the spring inside the tower there otherwise we will have a mag drop. Alright, so we're going to give it a go. Where are you on? It's a fairly normal sound of hissing when I tap the squelch with no crackling. So it's the engine that's causing our problem. Let's see what happens when we start it up. Yeah. There is one more thing that I want to do is that Robin on their P leads leave quite a long length of unshielded wire. I'm going to shorten this and I'm going to shorten this fly lead where it goes down to ground and then try it once more, see what happens. All right, I'm going to try and lose some of this unshielded length. I'm going to do it with one hand holding the phone and catch the ends. Easier said than done. Now, here we go. Let's get a thumb on there and catch those two ends so they don't drop in the end. I'm going to take a little more off than that, actually. Right, shorten them, put some new ring tags on, the old pitch crimpers, and uh, just check them. Yeah, we've got a little bit of wire through there. We've got a nice diamond. Grip on the insulation there. Yep, that's worked. So to recap what we've done, we cleaned up the aerial base, uh, the ground plane, that made a bit of difference. We cleaned out the mag, we put one new capacitor in. I was, I'm not convinced that that isn't a bit of a red herring, but that made a little bit more of a difference, cleaning up the distributors and renewing one capacitor that looks slightly older. Um, we've chopped out about a foot of unshielded wire from the p-leads where they connect to the firewall filters and go back towards the ignition switch and remade some dodgy crimps uh, let's hope that works last stage is a little air test and return it to the customer and it seems to be 99.9% .9 cured perfectly usable a few tiny clicks and cracks when the transponder is on but we can live with that And the last task for today is to take this PA28 back to Elmset and it is just a glorious autumn evening. There's an inversion layer, they're about 1500 feet. You can take your hands off the controls, the airplane can fly itself from Earl's Cone to Elmset and uh, it's really quite a privilege to be up here. Thanks for watching, good night.